These are some absolutely gorgeous sketches. You have this shoulder line and then you have the hood line going into the greenhouse and creating this more of a rake. I'm going to show you the comparison between this and the wraith and show you just how beautiful of, of an evolution this design is. In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new Rolls Royce Spectre. We're going to talk about some of the spec and tech, but more importantly, we need to talk about this design. There are a couple of details that I would like to tweak and more on that later in the video. So the spec in tech here, it has 577 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque, which to me, for a big Rolls Royce like this, it feels a little weak. I mean, 577 horsepower is not bad at all, but when it comes to EVs, if you look at the AMG Mercedes's and the Lucid and Tesla's, this feels a little in the lower end. Zero to 60 takes about 4.4 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles per hour. But the range, though, the range for this Continental Cruiser is 260 miles. Hmm, that seems pretty low for what this car is. The first cars will reach customers in late 2023. Price is expected to be about around $400,000 for this uh, beautiful Rolls Royce. Today I'm wearing my brand new The Sketch Monkey hoodie with my Sketch Monkey logo on the front and my Hot Rod Doodle on the back. If you want this for yourself, go and check it out on thesketchmonkey.com. It's pretty incredible that Charles Rolls actually predicted a future where Rolls Royce would sell nothing but electrically powered cars by the year 2030. He said EVs would be no noiseless and clean and that there is no smell or vibration features that he thought would fit a luxury brand like Rolls Royce perfectly and I tend to agree with that. This is a massive car. It weighs more than 6,500 pounds, has a 126 inch wheelbase and a turning radius of a small planet at 42 feet. So let's jump in in Photoshop here and talk about this design. So now if you want to sketch a Rolls Royce, specifically a coupe, there are a couple of key lines that will make up the entire car and that is first of all the shoulder. So the, the Spectre here has a cut shoulder or a two shoulder lines going something like this and then we have a line at the bottom that goes up. So it goes upwards a little bit into the front end and of course we have the gorgeous greenhouse as well sitting pretty low starting somewhere at this point and then kind of dips down almost in a straight line going into the trunk and these are the key lines for the coupes of Rolls Royce the Wraith and the Phantom coupe as well Phantom has a little bit more of a boot or sedan look to it before we go any further in the video I'd like to thank today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends Raid Shadow Legends has taken over the gaming scene and is the first game to bring the true console level experience to your phone with hundreds of artifacts and over 600 champions equipped with unique skills you can build your team develop your champions and raid your way I've been playing Raid for a while now and if I had to pick two favorite champions it would be Jintoro and under priest Brogany. What's special about Jintoro is that he's extremely focused and only does one thing but he does that really well and that is fighting and going on the offense. Under priest Brogany is the most flexible defense champion in the entire game. He's also very powerful when striking using HP burns. Right now Raid is running an amazing trick-or-treat promotion where you can win a bunch of real life and in-game prizes including a $1,000 Amazon gift card and some of the legendary Halloween champions in Raid. It's all free and it's super easy. All you need is your Raid player ID. Just download Raid with my link in the description, then head over to trickortreat.plarium.com which is also linked in the description below. From there, just enter the details, then spin the wheel and you get your prize. This special event runs from October 15th to November 5th, and once it's over, it's over, it's not gonna come back. Now, you can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items. However, this promo is only available until October 25th, so if you want this, you gotta act fast. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code right here on the screen, and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion. Aina, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon champions as soon as you get in game. And all this treasure will be waiting for you up here when you're inside the game. So click the link below to get started today and by doing so you also support the channel. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Let's have a look at the sketches here and see exactly what's going on. So this is the, the key lines that I just showed you of 
the Rolls Royce. And I think that's very important when it comes to the Rolls because they want to have a clean design in their cars and they want to have a clean identity as well. So looking at these sketches, I love this silhouette sketch. It looks really nice and you can, you can instantly recognize that this is a Rolls just by looking at the, the roof line. Going into the more rendered sketches down here, we have the rear view and the front view. The front view is very interesting. As you know, BMW owns Rolls Royce. You can definitely tell that by looking at the treatment of this area. So you have a positioning light up here and then you have the he headlight in the sort of not really in the bumper but underneath almost hidden smoked out so you can barely tell that there is something there but the main headlight sits right here we're gonna have a look more on that in detail when we look at the real car now the rear end i think this is um one detail that i would like to change this tail light which i'm going to show you more as well when we look at the real car it feels almost out of place it feels like it's not supposed to be there and the reason i'm saying that is because it lacks any sort of housing around it it's just a graphic feature that is is stuck onto a clean sheet of metal. Co compare that to the front end where you have some chamfers that house and shows that these elements are actually supposed to be there. These are some absolutely gorgeous sketches right here. You have this shoulder line and then you have the hood line going into the greenhouse and creating this more of a rake. I'm going to show you the comparison between this and the wraith and show you just how beautiful of, of an evolution this design is compared to the Wraith, for example, and also the Phantom Coupe. I'm gonna drop that in as well. Looking at the front view, same thing here. Gorgeous sketch, clean proportions. I love this um, perspective that we have in this sketch. You can see that this shoulder line kind of fades out in this point and then goes into this big, strong front fender that you need to have on a Rolls Royce. And then you also have this line that I talked about in the beginning that goes upwards instead of the traditional going from a lower point in the front and then going up in the rear. I really like that line. It kind of creates a light area in this surface right here so looking at the the real car here what I love about this design is that they kept the identity of Rolls-Royce intact a hundred percent when it comes to this design and here you can see that we have a simple LED bar one single line to have the daytime running lights and that in combination with the lights that we have in the grill creates a very menacing look for the Spectre. And this is the widest grille that Rolls-Royce has ever put on a car. And I think that really helps this car. It's a coupe, it's supposed to be more sporty. And I think this just emphasizes the width. And this grille, this wide grille in combination with these wide, thin daytime running lights, it creates a very nice wide look in the front end. And then we have the headlights down here. So this is what I'm talking about. I love this integration of these lines. You have a lot of horizontal lines. Again, emphasizing the width of this car. And then you have some chamfers or some details around the headlights that makes it look, it kind of position positions the headlights right there. And it feels like the headlights are actually part of the overall design, which is not the case when we look at the rear view in just a second. But I love this front end. I think this is what Rolls-Royce should be doing. Geometrical, almost architectural feel to this design with very simple graphics. I think having a light bar like this is one of the best decisions you can make in a front end of a car because it simplifies everything and it still looks very cool. You might think having just a light like this, a single bar will reduce the identity of the car, but you have to keep in mind that the grill is also lit up. So these are combined at night with lights that creates a very strong identity for the Spectre. So look at this gorgeous side view. I just love this design. I love that we have more of a curvature going down in the front end compared to, for example, the Wraith, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. And then we have the shoulder lines I talked about that fades into this area, very nicely done. Then we have this typical Rolls-Royce line down here, which goes up in the front instead of going up in the rear. So as I said, usually we have some uh, a line that goes something like this. So this is sort of inverted and it creates a lighter feeling in this surface right here because we're reducing this mass and it kind of slopes downwards going back. And then this line also continues into the rear end, as you can see right here. And we have a 
a lot more sporty diffuser than we have on the Wraith, for example, or any other Rolls-Royce up until this point. I think it looks really cool, and the graphics in the bottom part down here being blacked out reduces the height and the weight of this car. I also love the greenhouse. I think this looks beautiful with this line going all the way down and never goes back up in any way creating this almost fast back looking design going into the trunk right here and you have a nice angle on this pillar as well which in the wraith was more upright i think this makes it look a whole lot sportier when you have angled lines like that so looking at the rear view this is what i want to focus on in in this video because look at the front view here you can see that all the elements have some sort of housing to them we have chamfers right here we have a nice framing of the daytime running lights and also the grill has a nice frame to it but when we look at the taillight it sits completely alone in a very calm ocean that is the surface that has zero chamfers or nothing to it to show that the taillight is actually supposed to be here so what i would like to do in this case is to create some sort of chamfer around it maybe to make it look like it's actually supposed to sit there and now it feels like almost like an afterthought because we don't have this treatment anywhere else in the car all the other graphic elements of the car have something around it to frame it as i mentioned in the front end and i would love to have that in the rear end as well but it makes for a very clean looking tail and a very unique looking tail usually we have some sort of triangular shape for the tail lights of the uh, of the rolls royces but this has more of a squared out design and we also have this nice nice cut line nice chamfer in the bottom that goes into this key line of rolls royce going right here and then coming back in the rear end very nicely done and we have a two-tone so the roof and the boot the trunk here is blacked out which i think looks really cool as well not a huge fan of these wheels but i do understand why they put wheels like this on evs that covers up most of the i want to see the brake disc behind the behind the spokes i think that would add to the sportiness of this car but that would also reduce the range and since we only have 260 miles of range i think they want to get out as mu many miles as possible and having wheels that cover up the wheels more will help the range in that way so let's have a look at the side view real quick before we have a look at the interior so this new specter is supposed to be the the successor to the phantom coupe but it looks a lot more like the wraith to me looking at the side view and the greenhouse specifically but just look at how much lower this sits visually compared to the race the race sits almost has a straight shoulder line where this has more of a dip or curvature in the front end creating more of a narrow front end a lot sportier design in this car and i really love that but we still have the key lines intact from the previous uh, generations rolls royce with these lines we have this line at the bottom in the in the wraith and the phantom coupe that now comes back in the specter as well however we don't have this hockey stick design that we have in the uh, phantom for example which i think i prefer this design in this case because it feels a lot cleaner and i want to also mention the uh, the angle of the trim pieces that goes in the greenhouse just have a look at the wraith here we have almost like almost a stand up or 90 degree angle right here but in the specter they decided to make it look more sporty by uh, having a stronger angle on this piece which gives it this more forward motion and i think this in combination with this roof line just looks a lot better it looks like a smoother transition between this angle into this angle than we have in the wraith which has almost a similar angle of the roof line to the specter but then it has a almost 90 degree and these angles clash more than they do in the specter down here let's quickly talk about the interior i want to show you the wraith interior at the top and then the beautiful evolution into the specter interior you can see that we still have a very clean strong identity that this is nothing else but a rolls royce i do love the steering wheels of this very traditional looking even in the new specter we do have a digital gauge cluster here but i i don't mind it in this case because looking at this we have a nice housing a nice framing of the gauge cluster and also it transitions beautifully into this display right here which doesn't feel at all 
like an iPad stuck on the dash like we have in so many other cars today. But one detail I want to show you here is this. So have a look at this graphic feature or implementation of this section with these uh, silver pieces that frames this piece in, in the new Spectre. I think this is done in a lot more beautiful way because we have the air vents sitting inside of this big piece that is this black piece right here instead of having them look almost separated from the rest of the dash. For example, this area then clashes a little bit with these features, but in the Spectre, everything has a much better flow to it. And we have some tactile buttons and knobs for the climate control. So this is a very beautiful interior and also a beautiful transition or evolution from the Wraith while still retaining the identity of the car. So what are my final thoughts of the Spectre? Let's start with the design. I think this is an absolutely stunning piece of automotive sculpture. There are a few details I would like to change and do a little differently, more specifically the integration of the taillights, which I talked about. But looking at the line flow and the proportions, I think it's a beautiful transition of an evolution from previous Rolls Royces and specifically the big coupes. But what I don't understand here is the range. Rolls Royce cars are built to cross continents, to move you thousands of miles in extreme comfort and speed without breaking a sweat. When Charles Rolls envisioned an electric future for his brand, he also mentioned widespread charging stations spread out across the world. And although we're slowly getting there, I don't think the infrastructure is strong enough to support his original vision just yet. Especially when taking into consideration the kind of mediocre range of just 260 miles for this big Rolls-Royce Coupe. Will the Spectre be a great car to drive around London on a sunny summer's day? Absolutely. But when it comes to being a continental cruiser, I think, I feel like it's maybe a decade too early.